Hey guys, welcome to another video and today we are going to make our registration API. First one in the controllers, we're going to make a new folder with the name of authentication. In the authentication, we're going to have three things. We're going to have renew token, we're going to have login, we're going to have register. Renew token will have a renew our refresh token and will provide us with the new access token also. And the login and register, as you already know what it does. In the controllers, let's pick it first. Well, register.js. The JavaScript in, in the normal controllers, we're going to make a, two files. We're going to make index to JavaScript and we're going to make another file with the name of import to JavaScript. So basically, index to JavaScript will have our contain all of our routes. Okay? And the import to JavaScript will actually will we'll import all of our other routes like register, login, all of other things except the index.js. We'll import all of them here and we'll just keep exporting, we'll just export them all of them together. In the index.js, we'll import all the routes from import.js itself and we'll manage them easily. That's the main concept. Here we need to say constant router is going to be equal to require express dot router. And we have to say module export is called router. And in the main index.js, what we have to say here, we're going to say app.use uh, on slash authentication. We're going to require going to require uh, dot slash controllers. So what is happening here, we're just saying if, the, if someone makes a request to slash authentication, we are going to actually uh, send all the re requests to controllers. It's just basically controllers slash index because index is read as by default. So we're going to say just controllers. And whatever request we get here, we will just make more endpoints here. So we're gonna have if someone equals to slash uh, auth slash auth slash something or just slash auth something something like that. So we're gonna manage all of them here in the imports. We're actually gonna import those those things. We're gonna say constant registries. Okay, constant. Ones. Let's suppose constant registry is going to be equal to require uh, dot slash authentication slash register. Module exports is going to be equal to register, basically like that. Here we're going to say for the authentication section, just to make it a little more cleaner. We're going to say uh, constant <coughs> register is going to be equal to require dot slash imports. You want to say router dot make a post post uh, request router <coughs> slash someone go to slash authentication slash register. We should send him. We should send all of these requests to this function, register function, and the register function is is going to manage all of them by itself. Okay, let's see what the register function does. First of all, we're going to, we'll make a register function by default. Normally, it's going to be an asynchronous function. It will take a request and response, and we'll say module exports. Okay, module exports is called the register. Here, we need to import few more things. We need to import first of all uh, the bcrypt. JS, let's say require bcrypt JS. As I already told, we'll just log in the user automatically when he registers for the first time. Actually, he can register only one time, so yeah. We have JWT for the JS web token, and we'll have user from our models to actually manage our database stuff like that. Let's say dot slash dot slash model slash user so we have not connected with our database yet here what we're gonna do we're gonna say uh, mongoose dot connect with the process dot enemy dot database URL. you're gonna go dot enemy file Database URL is going to be just going to put a space after all of them. It's going to be mongodb colon slash slash 127.0.0.1 colon 27017 slash of a database name. I'm going to make a database right now. But why did I say said here 127.0.1 instead of saying localhost colon 27017? So basically, there were some issues with using localhost. They were having some set timeout issues after 10 seconds. So that's why I didn't prefer to go with that one. So yeah, let me open up my uh, MongoDB Compass. You can just copy your if you're using MongoDB Atlas. You can just copy the link and paste it here. It doesn't really matter. 
create a new data database with the name of Eldon YouTube and we're gonna have here a collection name as default. It doesn't matter. Create the database and done. We are good to go with this section. So there we go, we have the database URL. And just read the database URL and just connect it with the MongoDB. And yeah, we'll go back here in the registration section actually. Here what we have to do. First of all, we will also import the uh, validation. Constant validate is going to be equal to required. Dollar slash dollar slash validation slash authentication slash register. So how did I uh, add, you know added it as a validate? When say validate, um, validator. Okay. So I uh, here you can you may notice that I imported as a normal validator stuff like that. I didn't import it as this. So when I import it as this here, I can I export it as this. So here I can import it as whatever I want. I can import it with the name of this thing. It doesn't really matter. Because, okay. So we're gonna say constant validate is going to be equal to validator. Your request the body to that, and then if validate failed, oh, we're gonna say invalid. Not actually validate. We will say invalid. If invalid, say validate. Yeah, just name it looks better. If invalid, that means if they return something, want to say return response to JSON status zero. Message is going to be whatever message the invalid wants to, them to know. Okay, so it just returns an error message. If this is not the case, that means we can move forward. We can say constant get our email and get the password. Alter request the body. It's just like request the body, the email, request the body, the password, the destruction the thing. After doing that, we're gonna say constant connected is going to be we're gonna say first of all if the email has already been registered or not. Are we gonna know that? We're gonna say await user dot find one with that email. If connected, we wanna say this kind of thing. Return with the message. Make a function constant. Uh, send response is going to come take uh, type and text. It's going to say return with the response JSON. So this is going to be type. Message is going to be text. Just to save our time a little bit. Okay. So basically, here we can just say send the response. We want the type to be zero and text to be invalid. Righty. Same goes here and text to be. Email already registered. Already. If this is not the case, that means he's not registered yet. Now we have to register the user, right? So what do we do to register the user? Okay, we're gonna say constant save user is going to be equal to await new user. Here we're gonna provide it the request of body. Okay, just like that. So we already know our body has the same thing because the body has the same things as we will need in the database the username, the email, the uh, password. Okay, we actually need to send the hatchet password. So we're going to say constant uh, hatchet password is going to be called await bcrypt.hash. I'm going to hash it uh, how many? What do we want to hash? We want to hash our password. How many times? 10 times. So what do we do here now? We have two ways of doing this thing, okay? Uh, basically, the, both of the uh, both of them are same. We need to have it as an object. We need to spread it out like that, and we need to change our value of our password to hash and password, okay? So now we'll have hash and password saved in our database. We need to say dot save in the end, just to make sure it just saves it. It runs the save function. 
this would have to create a new user we'd have to save it eventually okay so now what what we want to do we want to create a two things we want to create a access token we want to create a refresh token let me say constant refresh token is going to be equal to actually just then we want to say jw dot sign we need to here pass an ID we'll say ID is going to be save user dot underscore ID so basically this save user will actually return us whatever it saved in the server okay so we will have ID we'll save ID in the JSON token payload and uh, we have options so the secret key we're going to say process dot enemy dot refresh secret key Okay, after having the secret key here, what we're gonna say, we're gonna give it another option that's going to be when it should expire. Expires in process that enemy dot refresh uh, expires in. Let me just go here. I'm gonna say refresh secret key is gonna be something. Refresh expires in is going to be how much after how much time we want the or refresh token to expire after 30 days. Nice. And how do we generate this thing? I'm gonna say node here. Just type require crypto dot uh, random bytes when to get up to we want to get up to 64 random bytes let's suppose 64 dot it converted the string hexadecimal hit enter yeah that's how we do it we got this thing for the refreshed uh secret key when i just duplicate it using control plus d i'm gonna generate another one i'm gonna copy that one this is the probably the most pure refresh token refresh secret key you can have and you always make sure we, we're gonna press hit you know type dot exit to exit that thing. You always have to make sure you don't leak this thing, okay? Just don't leak it. It's very important. And uh, another thing is going to be our access access secret, access secret key and access, access secret token. It should only last for about 15 minutes. It should last in minutes, not in hours. Access key access token is very vital. So basically, what is a refresh token? Usage and access token usage. So access token is used to actually, you know, make requests or something. Uh, how do we how do I say this to you? Okay, let me just tell you like this. Oh, we will have two things. We'll have our refresh token and we will have our access token. Okay. And what is going to happen? We are actually going to send request using our access token to the server. And that uh, we're gonna do like let's say upload a video, they will read it, read our access token, not our refresh token. Refresh tokens are only used to generate more access tokens. So we can also make some difference in them. Okay. Uh, we're just saying like like they are going to have the same payload, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. So maybe you think, oh, what what if uh, someone uses a refresh token as an access token? Well, in that case, we can change the things. We're giving a, a payload of ID to refresh token. Uh, maybe we can give it something else as an uh, extra security thing. We're gonna give it two things as in a payload, okay? Let's say we give it an ID and uh, we give it a type. Let's give it a type. Type is going to be R. And then we're gonna just do a duplicate this thing. Access token. Access secret key. Here we're gonna say type A access. So if the user tries to change this type A to be A to R or R to A in any of the tokens, the token is gonna change and the verification is just going to fail. Okay. So that's an additional security level added right there. And afterwards, what we wanna do, we wanna save this new refresh token inside of a server. 
So we know we're just registering the user, so they were not all the refresh tokens, so we can easily save them. All you have to do is just say await. All we have to say first of all, save user dot refresh token is going to be our new our refresh token basically like that. And we already know that is going to be an array because we already made the structure as an array, so we don't have to here pass it as an array. Okay, it's okay. Then we just say await save user dot save and uh, now we're gonna uh, set a cookie options for the cookie first of all okay. let me make cookie options let's say constant cookie options are going to be like that it has to be HTTP only right the path is going to be everything and then we have the same side thing it just has to be strict we need to make sure that the user is on the same side he doesn't he's not on, you know wandering here and there there and there and then we have the HTTP only path same side I think there was another option okay there's another option for the expires and actually <laughs> I actually forgot this one but the expires and for the cookie are different okay here you need to pass the time as a millisecond there's another thing called as max age you can use max age also but now expires in the lid is a new thing so we'll use expires in here we need to first we need to give the date we need to give the time in milliseconds we need to first of all get our get the milliseconds till now and what we have to do we need to add whatever whatever time we want to we want the token you know cookie to last how do we do that let's say new date in here we'll say our current date multiplied by actually not multiply plus we want to add time into it so whatever time we're at here whatever days we're at here we need to convert them into milliseconds so we'll use we'll only put refresh token expires in here so we're gonna say process.env dot refresh token expires in multiply by we need to convert it into milliseconds multiply by 24 multiplied by 60 times 2 that means 60 multiplied by 60 because a uh, minute has 60 seconds 60 seconds and uh, actually an hour has 60 minutes and a minute uh, minute has 60 seconds so that's just the same thing and we need to convert it into milliseconds that's multiplied by thousand and this is how simple it is okay you can even uh, copy this thing you can just mention somewhere uh, two hours or something like that two milliseconds Days to milliseconds, something like that, right? It will do the same thing. Now we have the cookies right there. We need to save the cookie basically. We need to say response dot cookie, or you can people use mostly you know uh, uh, response or set header set cookie, and then they say cookie dot serialize, and then they just put the options. But the simple thing is you can just say response dot cookie and have a cookie name. We're gonna set the cookie name in this uh, in uh, environment variable. So we're gonna say Refresh cookie name. Comma. We need to give it a token that is our refresh token, and uh, we need to give it uh, an option that is all going to be cookie options. Refresh cookie name here. We have refresh cookie name is equal to any name you want to give the cookie name. We have as refresh token. Okay. So here we're going to say. Return with uh, this thing. What do we say? Send this one user has been registered. Okay, seems simple. Good. We wrote this 45, like around 45 lines of code in this time. And okay, one other thing. Yeah, we cannot do something like that. We don't have to do something. Let's say return with the response of JSON. Status is going to be one. This is going to be user has been registered, and the access token is going to get the value of access token. The same thing. Okay, just like that. We need to send the access token only once the user has been registered. Okay. Well, that's it. The video for making our 
API for registering the user. We can test the API right now, basically. Yeah, we are going to test the API. Otherwise, there's no fun in making the API if we not if we are not going to test it. We'll say cd dollar slash cd server where node mon node mon server can okay, no errors thrown. That's a good sign. Can we can request here? We're going to say it as it's going to be a post request. It's going to be on http colon slash slash local host colon 5000 slash authentication slash register make an empty request connection refused by the server okay connection refused by the server the post authentication Next JavaScript. Ah, port 3000. No, let's say 5000. Send it. Okay, we got issues. Response to JSON. Response is not defined. Oh, yay. Response is not defined. How we say response is defined. You cannot. And uh, there we go. I mean, let me say response right there. You can put a response there. And we will have to pass its response also. We just want to make things more complicated. <laughs> User is required, and here you can see this is the advantage of using Morgan. It just says us how much time the request took, what was the response, where it was, and what was the type. Username is required, state as zero. Well, alrighty, if you ask for it, I'm going to provide it. Username is going to be test. Username length must be at least five characters. Long. Whoa, whoa, hold on, buddy. Password is required. Well, password test email test.com. Password length must be five characters. Test one. Email must be a valid email. Oh, yeah, that's my boy. Let's say Eldani at gmail.com. My username is going to be Eldani. Password is going to be test. Let's open a memory database. When I do a refresh, you can see we they automatically created a user's model because we are running the server. And here it is empty. When I say send, password length must be at least five characters. Long. Okay, my bad. Test one. Send it. User has been registered. This gave gave us the access token. And here you can see in the cookies, they actually gave us the refresh token cookie basically. If I do a refresh here, we can see we have the refresh token array, and here is our refresh token. It's exactly the same refresh token that we that we got back in the response of the cookie, and in the response here we have an access token. So in the access token, we are not going to save it in any cookie or local storage. Access tokens are vitals, so we're going to save access tokens only in uh, the memory of the website itself. What does mean? What does memory mean? I mean, like we're going to assign it to some variable stuff like that, and that's only its scope. So it's less hackable, just like that, because it's more important. Okay, what is happening here? Okay, so this is about the registration. That means basically, user is registering pretty good. You can delete it. You can try to register again. It goes through an error. Email already registered because we have that thing set up, right? And yeah, well, that was it for this video. I hope you do excellent. Enjoy this video. I will be making another video that is going to be the, for the login section and in the login section there is going to be a lot of things okay basically in the login section we're gonna have we need to use the refresh token rotations just to make sure if the user has was already logged in or not and we're gonna get the cookie of the user and we're gonna check if the cookie is valid or not whatever the cookie user was having in this browser stuff like that we need to clear all the cookies from the user browser and we need to check if all the refresh tokens are pretty good in the user's database, we need to check a lot of things. We will see if the user has some refresh token, he's trying to log in, something like that, you know, something like that. Then what we want to do, we basically just want to say something like, okay, wait a minute. Yeah, so basically what we want to do at that moment is just, we want to get that hacker user ID that we have in the cookie itself. We're going to decode it. We're going to get it. We're going to you know uh 
delete all of the refresh tokens from the that hacker user database and then what is going to happen boom 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 the user is not going to be able to log in or make any request anywhere well yeah that's the thing and uh, we're gonna do that in another video it's going to be so much fun so well yeah I will see you in the next video hope you enjoyed this video and this one if you have not accessed the playlist yet access the playlist like my video share this video comment down below how is there with the problem and I will see you in the next one